hey, what's happening, you guys? This is the Proclivity Podcast. If you're joining us live from the Proclivity Method, welcome. Today is December 22nd. We're rolling hot into Christmas. And you know what happens when Christmas comes around. One, presents. Two, cookies, candy, all the good things that are tasty and make you feel, well, at least me, like garbage. Yet, that's what we're going to talk about today here on the Proclivity Podcast. Yet, before we get into the Proclivity Podcast, we want to talk to you about the Proclivity Method. The Proclivity Method is our staple program. It is the Bruce Lee, the Jet Lee, the Muhammad Ali, see I got a lot of Lees in there, of nutrition programs. If you're truly looking to make a change, not only just physically inside, but also emotionally and mentally, this is what we do. We help you unwind the limiting beliefs that you have around food and yourself and give you the foundational, yes, very simple nutritional habits and we drill them in until they become part of your life. You have a world-class nutrition coach and you have a world-class life coach. We come together, we do a group setting, and it is incredible. We have testimonials after testimonials. Head to our website, www.proclivity.co to be able to check out more. And if you're interested, we're getting a group rolling, coming in hot, and we're putting together a super group for January third that's when we're starting off if you want to be part of that group head over there get a clarity call emily and i will rock it we are we are gonna rock it if you guys are tuning in you guys see us live either via youtube if you didn't know you can watch us on youtube we're two really good looking people if you've never seen us okay we sound good we look good and that's because we do the proclivity method um I'm looking at J-Lo right now, <laughs> a.k.a. Emily. She got her, she got her hair pinned back, pinned back like J-Lo. What's that movie that she's in? Oh, man, there's so many different movies. Oh, man. Jenny J- from the Block. No, that's a song, right? <laughs> I forget. The Jenny from the Block is definitely can, can be one, that's for sure. Um, we are saying that if you just threw in those hoop earrings, I might. Which I normally do. I know. It would have been great. It's still great. Um, and so you you have um, you have Joel Cochran, Co- Coach Joel, and Coach J Lo today. <laughs> hello, hello. Are you going to do some singing for us later? Um, it, it maybe. Have Stay you tuned. have you ever done uh, gone on stage and and done some karaoke? Mm, no. Would you do it? Mm, if I was into the song, in the crowd, the setting. What What would be your song? Oh, man. I don't know. That's a hard question for me. That's a tough one. <laughs> That's a tough one. Do you have one in mind? For myself? Yeah. Yeah, I love country songs. Mm. Um, yeah, there's a, couple, there's a couple different ones that run through my head. Uh, Rodeo by is it Garth Brooks? Oh, please, I believe so. Is it Garth Brooks? Yeah, I believe it's Garth Brooks. Man, that's a good one. I like singing that yeah. one because I love, as you know, I love the rodeo, of course. Yes, June, June it's a good time. 16th, guys, 2022. I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> love how you have the dates already. Okay. If y'all, if y'all can see on YouTube, I'm showing J-Lo right now, my, my cowboy boots. I just, mm, just love it. Anyways, you guys didn't come here to talk about J-Lo, nor did you come here to talk about my cowboy boots. We're here to be able to talk to you about how to thrive, not survive during the holiday season, but thrive during the holiday season. Coach, I was doing some research and I found a study in which, you know, a lot of people feel like they put on like three to five pounds during the holiday season, right? And if you're listening right now, you're like, yes, 
I put on three to five pounds. There's a difference between putting on weight and becoming bloated. Like tons of sugars, tons of salts, right? And just retaining a ton of water mm -hmm. than there is of like actually putting on body fat. And what it, right. sh what it showed is that during a six month period from uh, uh, Thanksgiving, I believe they even said maybe it's September, September through March, that the average person put on a pound. Yet, then the continuation, a year later, when they came back to it in September, they put on an additional half a pound. Hmm. So it wasn't actually the holiday season. Yeah, the holiday season in terms was a pound, but they put on another additional half pound that had nothing to do with the holiday season. Interesting. Oh, I thought that was very interesting. And this is where we get hyper-focused, right? And we see things in uh, social media or the news, right? And, and we get into our heads thinking about how the holiday seasons, oh, I just, I can't start this pro a new program. I got to get past the holiday seasons. You know, um, you know, I'll make a change in January. Guys, majority of people who set New Year's resolutions, I want to say it's like 3% follow through with their New Year's resolutions, 3%. And we're just going to put this out here. We're doing a goal setting mastermind in January. It's going to be fire. It is I'm going excited. To, it's going to be limited because we are literally going to make people take action. I am telling you, do not, negation and knowledge, come to this mastermind or sign up for it unless you are ready to be put in an uncomfortable position to make drastic moves. Yet that is the way that you change is by taking action action over anxiety so uh if you guys are interested in that shoot us an email team at proclivity.co spots are going to be limited it will change your life put a period at the end put a period at the end so yes. ho holiday eating emily you've done this for a really long time aka jlo <laughs> when what are what are the typical things that uh, clients have said to you when it comes to holiday season or what they struggle with or even friends, families, what you've heard. Like, is the holiday season really that hard or are we making it that hard? Yeah, I. the things I hear are, you know, my family makes this. It's a tradition. I make this. It's a tradition. There's all these cookies and all these treats around. I just want to enjoy the holidays without any stress. I don't want to have to restrict anything. Um, and, and when I hear that, I think, okay, what? Yes, there is a time and place for the tradition if you really, truly love something. Yet it depends on what, you know, re, re, going back to your goals and your values and what you're doing at the time. And, and thinking, is this actually what I want to be doing? Mm. And so I, to me, what I hear, I think the struggle comes from the setting or, you know, the environment that we're in, having all those things around us because our culture is so set in stone and making all the cookies and all the treats and eating all day, maybe because we're with family, <clears throat> visiting with them. Um, yet there are things that we can do to make it way less stressful in our mm -hmm. head, which mm -hmm. results in the actions we take, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, you know, you're talking about like, you know, what are our goals and, you know, what are, what are we trying to, trying to come to? And we talk a lot about in the proclivity method, what's your identity? Because there's a difference between like a goal where we see it as a finish line and how you identify yourself, mm -hmm. right? What's the difference between those two from your own personal perspective and what you've seen with your clients? Yeah, as far as a goal versus identity. Mm -hmm. So, so when you have an identity, to me, it's pe people are like, oh, well, that's just that's just what we do at this time of year. It's like, well, okay, well, why do you do it? <laughs> and maybe you've never asked yourself that. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're like, well, it, we've just always done it, and it's just our, something we look forward to. And it's like, okay, well, great. You know, if, if it is something you look forward to and you actually truly enjoy and it lines up with what you want to do day to day, mm -hmm. what your goals and values are, great. Yeah, if it's not making you feel great, if you feel terrible after, if it if it's not aligning with your goals, then why not change that? Whether mm -hmm. it be for you or your entire family. 
you know, you can do it on any level. And then the, uh, for goals, sometimes when we have goals, and again, this is why we highly encourage you guys to come to the mastermind in January, to set up proper goals. Sometimes we, we think that's a finish line. And so we're only going to that finish line. And then after that, we drop off, right? Or we think like, oh, I just have to do it for a few more weeks. Or I'll set a goal next year. And then you completely throw everything else out the window. And it's that all or nothing mindset that comes to my mind for most of my client, our clients. So thinking about why you do things is as simple as that sounds is highly important in what, you know, what we do in our coaching. Um, because again, simple and easy are not the same things, yet it matters. So making sure you ask yourself, why am I doing this? I always come back to that. Big time, big time. You guys, if you want to figure out your identity, here we go. We're going to give you, this is well worth a thousand dollars right here. Write down your goal, right? I want to lose 15 pounds. Write it down right now. If you need to, pause. Good. Now what I want you to do is put a why underneath it. Why do I want to lose 15 pounds? Answer the question. Well, I want to lose 15 pounds because, you know, I'll have more energy and I'll, I'll be more confident. Why do you want to have more energy and be more confident? Well, the, continue to ask the question. You'll start getting to that identity. You know, I've, I've really struggled with my confidence ever since my dad told me that I looked chunky in that dress. Mm. So do we identify with that 10-year-old, 12-year-old girl who heard that she was chunky in that dress? Is that our identity? And until we address that identity, that we are beautiful just the way we are, then we're not looking for the finish line of dropping 15 pounds. 15 pounds comes naturally because we identify as being a healthy person. We are not identifying as somebody in the past that we're trying to run away from. And so really understanding why, just like Coach Emily said, why do I want that goal? Why do I want to achieve that? Then we start getting to the identity. And again, you guys, this is something that we really unwind in the proclivity method. This is why we're the Muhammad Ali. It's because it's not just the foundational nutritional habits that we work on, which are drastically important. Yet we also work on finding that identity, deconstructing it, and empowering it. So it's something that you come into a holiday party and you have no problem going, nope, because you know it's it is not part of the person you know you are. And so it's so simple right. to be like, nope. Right. Look them dead in the eyes and be like, go ahead and eat that. That's mm -hmm. not how I'm going to do it. How's, that's not how I'm going to do it. So, boom, we're starting off with that, that identity. Being able to recognize coming in, into the, the holiday season that knowing the person that you are walking into um, your holiday party or to Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, uh, knowing the person that you are and being firm with that is important because there's a big difference between standing up to ourselves and for ourselves. What is that difference? What is that difference, Coach? Oh, man. So sometimes, we, again, going back to the identity, if we have these thoughts running through our head of like, oh, no, like this is what we do every year. Um, I don't want to offend anyone. Then you're having to stand up to yourself, your imposter. That's what I think of. You're standing up to that thought in your head of like, oh, I should do this, or this is who I am. This is what I've always done. And when you're standing up for yourself, you're doing something for yourself that you're already wanting to do, and you're already maybe doing it. And that's that's how I think of it in my head. I think they're both important. Mm -hmm. um, yet some a lot of us don't think about, oh, why would, why would I have to stand up to myself? That sounds kind of odd, right? Yeah. Yet when you think about it, again, what are the thoughts that run through your head when you when you come up with excuses or you come up with reasons not to do something that's for your health or that are that is towards your goals? Have you ever yeah. So I, I find thinking about it that way much more powerful. Yeah, yeah. And and we talk about this in the program that the the four is a looking for the attacker, right? When I stand up for myself, I'm looking for the attacker. And there are times like mm -hmm. like you said, where you will be standing up for yourself. There is a defense that is happening. Yet, when you, when you get into these 
arguments over, oh, are, are you going to have some of my, you know, double mashed, uh, super salty uh, mashed potatoes? And you're like, oh, no, thank you. That's not within my diet. And we start getting, that's a standing up for ourselves, right? And we start getting, grandma starts putting it on our plates and so on and so forth. Staying up to ourselves is just saying no. And not worrying that I have to explain myself. I don't have to explain myself to you. If you're getting your feelings hurt, grandma, mom, dad, uncle, aunt, (laughs) whoever, because I'm not eating your food that you find for yourself is good for you, yet not good for me, then you need to deal with your emotions of rejection. If you feel rejected because you were rejected when you were a little kid and your feelings are getting hurt instead of being able to accept and go, oh, no problem. It is not our responsibility to handle someone else's emotions. You are responsible right. for yours and, right. and the other person is okay. responsible for theirs, right? 100%, yep. And that's something I've had to overcome as a people pleaser, former people pleaser. <laughs> and being able to stand up to myself being like, no, that this is their responsibility to handle their emotions. I'm responsible for my own. So I'm going to stand up to my own emotions that may pop up and, and stick with those. Cause that's all that's in my control. And I, I cannot worry about everyone else's emotions. I got to do what's best for me. You said it so beautifully. What's under your control guys. Good luck trying to control someone else's emotions. It's like trying to catch a fly with chopsticks. Go ahead, try as you might, and you're just going to get frustrated and frustrated and frustrated. Unless you're the karate kid and you practice it 5,000 times with Ma- Master Mi- Miyagi. What was his name? I said that wrong. You guys. Mr. Miyagi. Miyagi, right? It's just not going to happen. You guys are just going to be sitting there like, wow, this is absolutely ridiculous. Yet, how easy is it to control your own emotions? Oh, stand up to myself, be able to set firm boundaries, and be able to say a simple yes or no, guys. Yeah, Very and when simple. you do that, it clears up your your mental space. You're able to be more present. You're less stressed. You're not wasting energy on things you can't control. So 100% agree with that too. Yes, yes. So here's the big question. Can we actually eat healthy during the holidays? Is that even a po- is that a thing? For sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> how do how how can we eat healthy during the holidays? What does yeah, it start with? Man. It starts with you standing up to yourself. <laughs> but next, planning ahead. You know, if you know you're going somewhere that doesn't have uh, maybe some proteins, maybe some veggies, whatever it is that you are prioritizing, bring something. Mm-hmm. Eat something ahead of time. I've done that a few times where I'm like, I know there's not going to be enough protein there. I'm mm-hmm. going to have a protein shake before. Yeah. So I don't end up resorting to the cookies and eating 10 of those after dinner because I'm still hungry because I didn't get enough protein. But one of my favorite things to do, yeah, one of my favorite things to do is to bring a dish that is high in protein or veggies if I know that they're not going to have as much there. And so then I can at least have a portion of that and know that I'm getting something nutritious in and feeling good about. <clears throat> so that's definitely the, one of the first things that I think about. Um, aside from being able to go to the party and say no to the certain things that you truly do not want. Right. Um, it, it, it comes down to planning ahead and then looking at where am I going, what is going to be the environment, mm-hmm. and how can I plan for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you brought up the protein. We, we, talk, we talk a lot about uh, quality protein, quality fats. Mm-hmm. And that's because we teach about metabolic flexibility, your body's ability to be able to burn fat or carbohydrates, be able to switch fuel sources easily and fluidly. And that is why we push the, the protein, the way Coach Emily is talking about the protein. Get that, get that pro- protein. Make sure you have the solid protein. Now, the average holiday meals, right? If we just started painting a picture of what we usually see, what? let's give the listeners a, a visualization of some of the foods that we really should stay away from, both like... We, we know a lot of the desserts, sure, uh, yet 
what are some of the foods that can get us trapped really quick and send us into a, you know, glycemic overload? Yeah, it, it's funny because I'm I'm going to make this. Yeah, I'm going to. There's a strategy to it. So the one thing I think of is like a, a sweet potato casserole or something mm -hmm. potato like that maybe has a little sweetener add to it or butter or something that's super tasty, right? That's easy to eat and eat and eat because it's less likely to fill you up as fast. Um, that that's what I think of. And yet there's a way to go about doing it. And so like I mentioned before, protein and like what you were just saying, I make sure to have a, it, my protein first, or at least the majority of my plate is protein. Because I know if I eat that with it, I'm less likely to want to eat more of the other things like the potatoes, or it could be, again, like you said, the pie later on, or whatever desserts or sides that there are, they're a little bit less nutrient dense. So Emily, we, we talked about some of the foods or specifically the food we were, you were talking about, uh, the sweet potato casserole, right? Which is so they put like the marshmallows on top. Right? Oh, was that you can do that? Yes, yeah. I put pecans and some butter. <laughs> yes, right. And so, like, that's a real sneaky one, because you're like, oh well, look at there's a, a there's a sweet potato down there, and it's like, well, I mean, sweet potatoes are called sweet for a reason, and and then we add some more sweetness on top, and then you'll also have uh, the um, fruit uh, um, jello, right? You know, there's mm -hmm. like blueberries, raspberries, and it's like during dinner. I'm like, but this is like, this is like literally dessert. Like uh -huh. we got the sweet potatoes, and marshmallows on top or, you know, candy pecans or, you know, brown sugar or whatever. And then you have the, the fruit jello and I'm just sitting there going like, is this dinner or dessert that we're having here? <laughs> you know, add in like uh, sweet buns that are going to be out on the table with honey and butter, like all these things start adding up. Yet before we even sit down for mm -hmm. dinner, when we first get to our holiday party, we take off our coat. We say hi to everybody. Kids are running around, dogs are running around, right? There's Christmas music in the background. Where do people usually go to first? Yeah, usually the kitchen or wherever the snacks are. <laughs> snacks, you guys. There's all these snacks or appetizers that are going to be out on the table. And here's the problem. Most of these appetizers are going to be processed, hyperpalatable foods. What type of foods, in your experience, have been on the table? For, for you at different places that you've gone? What, what do you usually see appetizer wise? Yeah. So first one that comes to mind, Chex Mix around the holidays, especially Boom. usually like, yeah, Chex and pretzels and maybe some nuts, maybe some chocolate in there. <laughs> uh, that is a super common one, you know, bowl of chips, bowl of crackers, chips and salsa, any of those. Yeah. One of my famous ones at my house is Lay's chips. Uh, uh, no Pringles, w the ones that have the grooves mm. in it, you know, mm, the ruffles, yeah, ruffles, the... ruffles. That's one, not Pringles yeah. Yeah. and French, French onion dip. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. Total go to, and people are hammering on it. What's the problem with having those type of appetizers out on the table? What does it do to your body? How does it set you up for dinner? And how does it set you up for dinner and drinking after? Yeah, two things. So one, they're hyper palatable. So it's going to trigger to your brain, I want more, I want more, I want more. And they're nutrient poor. Same thing. Your body's gonna be like, I'm not getting very many nutrients. I need I need more of whatever you're eating because I'm not getting very much nutrients to help me here. <laughs> so one, you're just it's gonna increase cravings. But two, there's also the the blood sugar at play, right? So since there are mostly refined carbs refined food in general, it's going to spike your blood sugar. And that's going to cause also cravings, but, but also your energy is going to maybe rise a little bit and then it's going to dip later. So both of those things are majorly at play. For me, it's more, you know, in this situation, it's the hyper palatable part is like your, your mouth's like, man, this is so good. I just want more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And it's going to lead to you wanting 
the less nutrient dense food and craving more of the sweets and treats and less, you know, less nutrient dense food. Right, right. And, and so we can almost see the cycle, right? We walk in, you know, somebody wants to hand us a drink first and foremost. So it could be wine, it could be some type of mixer. So we're already hitting ourselves with some alcohol and, you know, sugars, which is now starting to increase our blood glucose levels. Then we go over and, you know, we have a drink in our hand. We start grabbing on to the, the ruffles and the pretzels and the Chex Mix, all hyper palatable food. All of a sudden, that glucose continues to rise, right? And this can also play effect to when we do have dinner. We're like, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too hungry, so I'm not going to fill up my plate as much. Or you start seeing the foods that we were talking about, like the sweet potato casserole, and your body may have started the decline at that point where insulin has come in and our glucose levels are starting to drop or blood sugar levels are starting to drop, which is going to increase those hunger cues, correct? Or those cravings? Correct. So yep. now we're sitting there, you know, whether you, you're all sitting down and it's all in front of you or you do buffet style, right? My family does buffet style. So you're, you're walking by, you're seeing all the foods and you're, you're doing just a little bit of the veggies. But then you're looking at that sweet potato like, oh my gosh. Or that <laughs> That's jello. a veggie too, right? That's a veggie too, right? And hey, it's a holiday season, right? And I got two drinks in me. And and <laughs> you guys can see it because you, you all might be laughing because you're listening going like, yep, damn right. It's true. That, that's, that's me, <laughs> right? And what we're trying to do is we're trying to paint what physiologically is happening, but also what is psychologically happening when it comes to that. So we've now painted the picture, Coach Emily, on what it looks like typically. Right. What would we do differently? So, okay, we're walking through the door, we're taking our coat off, same situation and scenario. What are the, what are the things that we do differently from yeah. this point on? Starting off with the drink. Yeah. If that's something you don't want to indulge on for whatever reason, you don't have to explain yourself. You just say, no, I'm good. I'm, can I have a glass of water? Or I will get myself a glass of water. Or do you have any sparkling water? Whatever the other alternative is for you. Simple no. Simple. I'll have this instead, If please. <laughs> and then when you start to look at the appetizers, one, do you, even, do you want them? Looking ahead to dinner, like... I've mentioned before, I, I personally don't even like appetizers at all. I would love to indulge more on the dinner in the actual real whole foods there than to waste my appetite on the appetizers. Yeah, if you are wanting to snack on something, I look for things like the nuts and the, if you like cheeses, salami, like the charcuterie type stuff. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that has protein, fat, it's going to stabilize your blood sugar, it's not going to spike it first thing and it's it's going to set your palate up for success better going into dinner and so now what we're doing is we're, we're making that that uh decisive decision when i walk in and one of the things that that i want to suggest to um our listeners is that when somebody comes in and goes hey can i get you a beer instead of even saying no which we are very firm believers in just a solid no or a solid yes right you yep. could say, go ahead, ask, ask me if, if I want a beer. Joel, can I get you a beer? You know what? Do you have uh, uh, sparkling water? You sure see you. where why I just, we just avoided the whole, I have to answer that question to this is what I'd like. You're the host. Right. Are you going to give it to me? You know, yep. so being able to use the words of I would like, or do you have that immediately get, puts it back on them in terms of being the host and then being able to go, oh, yeah, I do have soda water. Awesome. Do you have a lime that you could put in it as well? Now you're getting them to, like, create something for you. So it doesn't even have to be an alcohol. But now they're going out of their way as a super host and going, like, I do have some limes. Yeah, I'll squeeze it in there. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and ice would be best for me. Thank you. Boom. I've completely derailed you trying to come in to me and say, like, I'm drinking alcohol so you should be drinking alcohol we talk right. about projections in the program guys a lot of the times because somebody 
knows that they shouldn't be drinking or they should be eating differently, they're going to project on you. Oh, come on. It's a holiday season. <laughs> just have a few beers, right? Oh, just fill your plate up. That's a projection. Because somebody who's like, no, my health is incredibly important to me. I, I stay healthy and that is the human being I am. They will very rarely press you into doing something that you don't want to do when it comes to your health. Because they're totally yep. fine in their body. They're totally accepting in their body. They're not going to press on you. So when those people are pressing something on you, don't look at it as a defensively like, how dare you do that? Just recognize that inside of them, they're projecting how they're feeling, right? Misery likes company. You know, not saying that they're misery, miserable, yet you get the saying, recognize it, be able to see, and now we can have empathy instead of being in a position that is a defensive where I'm trying to trying to fight. So that is definitely something to think and consider. Um, at this at this point, at this point, we now have gone into being able to get to dinner. And now what do we want, want to do is we want to be able to get to dessert. So when it comes to eating dessert, what, what is the go-to? Do we just completely skip past dessert or do we do we handle it with 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 uh, strategy what what's the way when it comes to dessert or do we just go we go ham <laughs> no. so by the time you get to dessert ideally you've had some protein and veggies in you and that will fill you up and you know literally like physically you're going to be more satiated but also your palate's going to be more tuned into the less hyper palatable foods so you're going to ideally be less uh, apt to want everything. Yet, sometimes we do. And I recommend all the time, pick and choose what is truly worth it to you, what you really want. And so if it's this, you know, if there's five desserts and you, the cookie looks like it, that's your favorite thing because I, I'm a cookie monster. Those are my, those are my treats that I treat myself with. Um, when the cookie is worth it, right? It has that's to be right. good enough. That's right. <laughs> So I pick and choose. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have that cookie. I'm going to put it on a plate. I'm going to go sit over here and really enjoy it. Mm. Because you know what happens when you start grazing at all the different things and you're just talking to people and you're standing and you're moving around. You're not present with it. You're mm -hmm. likely not enjoying it as much and you're way more likely to eat more. Yes. Yes. And that's, that's, that, that, con that's that control of being able to say, hey, why am I standing over the dessert tray? Or why am I here? Coming back to what we talked about earlier, uh, being able to ask the question. Just ask the question. Mm -hmm. And when you give yourself a moment to be able to answer the question, it's easier to be able to walk away. It's easier to walk away. So now we've painted two different uh, scenarios. The one in which we come in and it's just, uh, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go with the flow and so on and so forth. And then we paint a picture of being able to start off straight out the gate being able to set your offensive boundaries because boundaries are set offensively, guys, not defensively. We don't allow people to push and take away our land until we just go, oh my gosh, you're out of my doorstep. I'm going to set a boundary. No, you come in straight out of the gate and you make your boundaries set from the beginning. I'm not drinking tonight yet. Do you have any soda water? And could you put a lime into it? That would be fantastic. Boundary has been set from the very beginning, right? Being able to go, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to situate myself away from all of the hyper palatable foods. Or I'm going to go and play with the kids. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to have a conversation where I sip my soda water yep. with my lime in it. <laughs> Different ways to be able to start establishing from the beginning how you're going to walk into this holiday party. And when you do that, now it has nothing to do with who's around you, the food around you, or the people and the influence you are setting and standing up to yourself, which is highly, highly important. Now, when it comes to setting yourself up for success, we have 
three. We have three tips for you when it comes to getting coming to your holiday season. And this is what I want you to think of and how we're going to talk about this when it comes to these top three tips. It's going to be like this. What can you do before you get to the holiday party? And what can you do when you are at the holiday party? Because there is a way to be able to establish before you even get there what you can do to be able to have the the enjoy the the holiday party and still stay with the identity of who you are so coach emily what are our top three tips when coming into the holiday season for us to thrive and not just survive yeah so before you get to the party ensure that you've had enough protein throughout the day or like i said before if you know there's not gonna be enough protein for you there bring some or have some right before could be some eggs could be some meat could be a protein shake plus hydration so protein and hydration before so you know us here we love element so making sure that you're properly hydrated before the party all day leading up until wherever you're going because we know when you're not properly hydrated you're more likely to eat more have more cravings and make worse decisions <laughs> so num that's number one number two when you get to the party, like you were painting that picture of when you walk in the door, making sure that you are firm in your decisions and being able to stand your ground, know what you want. Maybe that is, yeah, I need to get away from the, from the appetizer plate or I need to say no to this and ask for this instead. And being able to strategize that and be firm in what, you're, what, you, what you truly want. Mm -hmm. And then third, how do you build your plate? You, you might know this one. Start with protein first, protein, veggies, for sure. And then add in the things that are worth it to you that you're like, oh no, I really want to enjoy this. Yet going back to what do I have a first few bites of? Have a few bites of protein first. It'll set your blood sugar up for success. And even if we were a host, I was just thinking about this. If it's buffet style, right? And really dependent. You want to set your proteins and fats up first. I just thought about yes. that. You know, <laughs> like how you actually lay out the food really does matter. Yeah. And you can actually yeah. set your guests up for success without them even right. knowing it. Because right. if I'm trying to get protein in first and go, hey, I want, you know, half my plate to be protein, you know, but the right. protein is at the very end and I have to go through the assault of sweet potatoes and everything else that I, well, I do want to try some. Yet if I'm feeling hungry, it, I might end up loading my plate a little too much. And then I get to the protein and I'm like, oh man, I only have a quarter of my plate left because I yep. was buffet styling it. Set, set your, your buffet up so that it is the proteins, the veggies, the healthy fats, and then at the very end, the sweet potato, the, the jello, the sweet bun, sweet buns, right, and all right, that kind of right. stuff. Now you're setting literally without anybody else knowing, you're going to be setting up your guests for success because they're going to end up yes. grabbing that protein, those veggies first, and by the time they get to the sweet potatoes, they're going to be like, oh, I don't really have a ton of room. They're going to actually put less on their plate without them even knowing. So that is something that just came through my mind in terms of buffet style. Um, obviously, if, if you have it all laid out on the table, you know, first things first, ask for the protein, right? Second thing second, ask for the veggies. Third, being able to add anything else after that. That's, that's some smart stuff right there. I like that, Joel. I'm going to use that. Yeah, it's, I, I notice myself when I go to somewhere, I tend to do that. I'll go out of order <laughs> in the line or I'll look ahead be like, okay, where's the protein? Where are the veggies? And then what else do I have? And then I know to put a little bit of the sides on just as like a taster first and then load up on the protein and veggies. And then I can always go back for more for the mm -hmm. sides, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like exactly. Exactly. And you might look like a little bit of a weirdo if you like, there's a ton of people behind you. You go to the protein first and then you look behind you and everybody's <laughs> behind you. So you just get back in the line. Right. With your protein and your veggies. And then you can come and put all the other stuff on there. So yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you guys, it's fine. 
again, it first and foremost starts with you. This is why we talk about it in the proclivity method. How you identify with yourself is drastically important because when you identify with yourself as this type of person, it doesn't matter what the world tells you. If you've given birth to a child, you know you are a mother. You identify as being a mother. And no matter what the world would say to you, like, Emily, you're not a mom. You'd be like, Psh, please, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you about my birthing experience. You <laughs> identified as being a mother and going through the experience of birthing a child. We now identify. There's nothing that takes us that will ever take that away from you. And so we encourage you guys to make sure to identify by first and foremost, starting off with the why. Answer why three to five times you'll get down to your identity. Again, a very simplistic yet powerful coaching tip to be able to know what your why is before you go in. Before you get to the party, make sure yep. that you've established your game plan. Hey, you know what? I'm going to make sure that I'm hydrated because if I'm not hydrated, our, our stomach can confuse dehydration and hunger cues or hunger cravings. So if I know that I'm completely hydrated, that if I am feeling some hunger cues, they're truly hunger cues, right? Being able to have maybe some veggies and some protein before you show up, particularly if you know it's a place that isn't going to have a ton of vegetables, isn't going to have a ton of high quality source uh, um, whole foods, make that decision beforehand. That's going to help you when you walk through the door to be able to go, I'm, I'm not ravenous. I'm not going to stand by all the appetizers and be smashing my face. Now I'm able to have a stable blood glucose level so that when it comes to dinner, I can make the appropriate decisions to loading my plate up with proteins first, then veggies, healthy fats. And at the end, if I have a little bit of room, I toss in grandma's sweet potato casserole that is delicious yet I then am going to attack my plate in the same facet and manner that I loaded it up on, right? Right. That's yes. important, guys. If you go to sweet potato casserole first, you're putting in the, the sugars and carbohydrates first. That's going to jack up your glucose levels quick. Putting in protein and fat, it's going to slow down that response. You're going to feel a lot better at the end of your meal. <clears throat> So my last piece of advice, I give this to my clients quite often, is because sometimes people will go to the party and they, they all of a sudden go, oh, I, I can't have that. that. That's not what I'm doing right now. Instead of that, think of, oh, do I actually, do I want that? No, I don't want that. So no, I don't want that. I'm good. It doesn't make me feel good. Those are two things that you can go to. It doesn't make me feel good. I don't want that. That tends to put under, help people understand, oh, she doesn't want that. It's not that she can't have it because of a certain diet she's on. So think about the words that you use when you are being firm in your choices. I, again, guys, powerful statements are no and yes. No and allow silence to sit in. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite thing. Nope. I like or, it. Or no, and I'll just stare at him. And I'm, <laughs> I'm a king at silence. And when you get a king or queen at being silent and being able to breathe into your belly, and be able to control that response, people will just go, oh, okay, and they'll just back away. Boom, boom. Or use the techniques that Emily talked about too. Those are great techniques as well. So again, standing up to ourselves. All right. Yes. So there you go, guys. That's our one, our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight breakdown of the holiday season really comes down to being able to recognize within yourself what is your identity, how will you stand up to yourself, and then utilizing those different techniques that we gave you to be able to thrive during the holiday season so that you can get through, enjoy the food, enjoy the company, and be able to get into the new year feeling fantastic. Anything yes. else? No, I'm excited for everyone to try this stuff out. Me too. Me too. All right, guys, that is it. Episode 53. Please, if you like listening to us, share, like, subscribe, tell the world about it. We give all our secrets right here on the Proclivity Pack Podcast. We're going to be seeing you next week. Another episode. We got some really excited stuff, really exciting stuff rolling into 2022 that we're going to be talking about. So we look forward to seeing you and talking to you because i guess we're not hearing you right 
we're just talking at you next episode <laughs> all right guys see ya bye